Hi everyone, it's Darren from Vitae Sports. Today we're lucky to have Derbyshire all-rounder Finn Hudson Prentice with us. Finn had a remarkable rise last year from MCC Young Cricketer to turning out for the Vitality Blast Finals game with Derbyshire. So I hope you enjoy the feature. Finn, great to see you mate. How are you keeping? Hey, Longy. Um, all good, mate. Just getting by, obviously, at this time. It's pretty tough, but just get ticking over. Yeah, you seem like you've been one of the more active uh, players around, mate. I've uh, seen you doing lots of indoor cricket practice and lots of various other activities, and your hair seemed a bit different when I last saw you. Yeah, I'm not going to bother getting the hair out, but um, <laughs> yeah, I got my, got, my, got my partner to be throwing balls to me inside, which uh, is always good fun. Um, no, it's going okay. I'm trying to keep up as much as I can, but don't have a garden over here. Um, uh, so, can't do what the other lads are doing at the moment and going out there. So, just trying to ruin the apartment instead. <laughs> so, you're desperate to get back on the pitch, are you? Yeah, absolutely desperate. I've seen enough of the, the walls of this house, I think. Yeah, yeah. well, hopefully, mate, hopefully yeah, not too long. So, are you ready for our 10 questions to learn more about Finn Hudson Prentice, mate? Yeah. Hopefully I can be a little bit more interesting than I come across as a person. Um, <laughs> that's a bit harsh, mate. That's a bit harsh. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go for it. Question number one. Who was your sporting hero growing up? Uh, that is a very plain answer from me, actually. It's Andrew Flintoff. However, more recently, sort of growing up from, from a like, slightly older age, because Andrew Flintoff was sort of nine, ten years old, um, so from sort of slightly older age, I've always sort of idolised Rory McIlroy from a different sport. Um, so he's been sort of a hero of mine for the last sort of 10 years or so. Yeah, okay, excellent, mate. Um, that might possibly, I don't know, might answer the next question. If you were, which sport would you want to be number one in the world at if it wasn't cricket? <laughs> definitely golf, yeah. <laughs> that definitely answers it. Yeah, it's cash and lifestyle and I just love the game. So golf, definitely. Are you a decent player? Uh, <laughs> Don't be too modest. I was at one stage. Um, uh, not so much recently. Uh, I got my handicap down quite low a couple of years ago, but since I've been playing a lot more cricket, I've been trying to avoid the golf. Yeah. And I came back to the golfing game and just start slicing everything into the third fairway. So, yeah, not so great recently. Okay, mate. Okay, who's the funniest player you've ever played with? Funniest player? Phil Salt is... <laughs> Hilarious. Yeah. Um, he'd, he'd be up there. He's one of my close friends. Um, Tom Lace is quite funny, and Alex Hughes is quite funny as well. So, probably those three. Okay, excellent. And who's the toughest opponent you've ever played against? Um, the toughest opponent in terms of skill, or just when you go up against them, you're just like, oh, I don't want <laughs> to. Go for much. both. Um, Skill-wise, Ollie Robinson was very good last year when we played against him in, the, um, in that game at Derby towards the back end of the season. His skills were incredible, swinging it both ways at, from six foot five, six foot six, whatever he is. So that was pretty tough to face. Um, in terms of opponents, that's tough to play against. Um, I don't know, but I got my, my debut got made quite tough for me. And, um, I think the Middlesex boys are quite uh, quite angry because the pitch was quite flat at Derby and they elected to bowl first. And I remember Finn, Helm and Roland Jones all going at me for about two hours on the field, like non-stop for about two hours, like every ball just chirping. So that was <laughs> that was pretty relentless. But I can't really nail down a singular person, to be honest. No, There's quite a few on the county circuit that enjoy a bit of a word or two. Yeah, I can imagine. There's a baptism of fire with the Middlesex boys. Yes, well. Well, Who has got the best and worst musical tastes in the Derbyshire changing room? Um, <laughs> I don't know that one. Um, I don't want to offend too many people. I know the, <laughs> the, South Africans, the South Africans listen to some terrible music, and we've got a few of those in the dressing room now. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to say, Leas listens to some some pretty terrible music. He listens to some rubbish. Um, Who's that, mate? Sorry, Leas Leas deploy. He listens oh, right. to some some rubbish. Um, you've always got to back yourself, don't you? I'd say my, my music taste is the best, but then again, everyone would say theirs is the best. So, uh, best music taste. 
Harvey Harvey always gets his um his music on the on the Bluetooth system whenever we win a game or after the games are played. So probably Harvey, I guess. Okay, what does he play? Oh, so you know Harvey's a little bit heavy. It's like London nightclub scene is what yeah. Harvey plays. It's not the old classic sing-alongs, but <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. Okay, if you could play in any historical cricket team from the beginning of cricket, which one would you like to go back and play in? Wow, um, that's a great question. Uh, has, has anyone else answered that one? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, we did Ben Brown um, from your old club. Um, he yeah. chose the the Ashes two thousand and five. So yeah, I was gonna. I was thinking the Ashes two thousand and five, but like, I, I guess I'd like just that era of Australian cricket. Like, I was thinking either the West Indies in the eighties and early nineties, oh, all you. that, all that um, Australian team from like the nineties to early two thousands. Just unbelievable that test team, yeah. With the Wars, Warren, McGrath, all those guys, Ponting, Langer, Hayden, yeah, that would be a that would have been an incredible team to play with. So probably that team, I guess, one yeah. of those two. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking the West Indies one myself. I thought that'd be yeah. quite interesting as well. Just slightly, like a little bit too far. Like I didn't haven't seen that much footage of them. I mean, I guess like from my early childhood, it was like Australia. That's why the two thousand and five Ashes was such a big part because it was. Like defeating the one of the greatest teams ever. Yeah, so, yeah, probably that Australian team. Okay, mate. What? Uh, who? Sorry, who was the biggest influence on your career or influences? Um, I think my my mum and my dad were massive influences when I was younger. Mm. Um, they used to drive me everywhere, take me everywhere, um, as as parents do. Um, but the support was non-stop. Really, I, it got a bit. A bit intense at times, as it always seems to, but that's probably my, my two biggest uh, ones. Maybe like recently, Steve Kirby would be a big influence for me. Obviously, being on the YCs and taking me through um, to Derbyshire now, he's now a close friend of mine. So, probably more recent times with Steve Kirby, obviously, now I've moved out of home and stuff, he'd probably be the one that sticks out the most for me. Uh, but before that, probably mum and dad, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And your favourite TV show ever? Favorite TV show? That is tough. Um, can it? Oh yeah, okay. It's favorite TV show. Sorry, that's tough. I've watched quite a few recently. Um, what do you reckon? What are the ones that I rave about? <laughs> I'm just asking my partner. So I've I've got a few that I that I talk about. I. Series-wise, I've, I've really enjoyed that Michael Jordan one recently. I think that's probably gone into my top um, top series. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest TV series for me is probably Family Guy. I seem to watch that most nights. And obviously, in away games, um, when, you, when you're traveling away, ITV2 is always on So uh, in the hotels. So probably Family Guy. I watch that most evenings and get a good laugh out of it. So probably Family Guy. Pretty easy answer. Yeah, okay, excellent. Um, you might not want to answer this one. Who's the worst dressed dog we should play? Worst dressed. Um, see, what people have been saying Harvey, but I like Harvey's fashion sense. <laughs> I remember listening to listening to Tony's podcast with Alex Hughes and they were saying saying that Harvey Harvey had the worst fashion sense. He's come up quite a bit in this. Um, I'd say again, I'm I'm not a fan of the old flip flops and jeans, and the South Africans seem to rep that quite a lot. Um, around the change room so probably either Mads, Lears or Mikey or Dustin they, they seem to enjoy that I think Dustin's got quite good fashion actually so I'll, I'll go with them three the South Africans Mikey, Lears and Dustin okay. <laughs> right. <laughs> right if um, you could have three ideal dinner guests who would you choose? Uh, after watching that documentary, I'd say Michael Jordan would be one of them. He's just fascinating, isn't he? Like to see his mindset and the way he goes about things. Um, I had a think, bit of think, bit of a think about this one, and um, I've watched a lot of Bake Off recently, as you might have seen um, on Twitter. I've been posting about it. Yeah. Um, and uh, Noel, Noel Fielding is a very interesting man. Um, <laughs> I remember, I remember, I remember the Mighty Boosh. Did you ever watch him? At yeah, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd quite enjoy sitting down for a meal with him and see what's going through his head. Yeah. Um, 
As for a third, who would I um, try and go outside of outside of cricket? I'd probably like to sit down with Rory McIlroy. Probably, as I said earlier, he's one of my idols. Um, I'd enjoy sitting down with him, and he seems like a really nice guy. So, chatting to him about his experiences on about sport and stuff. But I guess if you wanted to go somewhere outside of the games, outside of sport as well, who would I like to hang out with? Um, I think a funny dinner guest would be Adam Sandler. Probably he's he's in a lot of movies that I seem to like, and I love Happy Gilmore. So I'd sit, I'd sit down with him and chat to him about movie lifestyle and all that, all that jazz. I guess. Excellent. And if you had a hundred million pounds to spend, what would you buy? What would I buy? I think the first thing on my mind would be properties because I'm <laughs> that's what we're looking at at the moment. Um, probably some a nice villa in. In the in the Algarve, or try and get myself a golf course or something somewhere. Build myself a house with a golf course on it, or um, maybe a yacht, something like that. Okay, brilliant, brilliant, Finn. Thank you very much for your time, mate. Was, uh, very yeah. enlightening viewing to uh, Dom. She's the uh, new star player. <laughs> Cheers, Longy. Okay, mate. Thanks everyone for listening. Hope you enjoyed another V Time Sports feature. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We've got lots more content coming your way. Take care.